Hello, I'm Steve, and this is Terry with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. Just wanted to kind of share a little something that's on our heart today. Um, my, my wife reads scripture and say whatever the Lord tells her to say, but we went and saw a movie today, and it was called I Can Only Imagine. And, you know, this man went through a journey, from a little boy to a young man. A lot, you know, there's a piece about forgiveness in there, and to forgive his abuse of dad, and he just went through a long journey to get that song out and that's kind of what I want to talk about about the, you know us being vessels meet for the master's use so anyhow it's second Timothy 2 19 through 22 nevertheless the solid foundation of God stands having this seal the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. That's good. So, you know, this young man had a choice in this movie. We all have choices, you know. Our, my journey is 35 years of oh, some awesome time with the Lord and some failures, you know, but we all have choices and the Lord knows those that are his and he's pre he preparing us like a, like a, like the potter does with the clay and because he has a purpose for us, he has a will for us and things that he wants to see done on this earth. That's why he created us. He knows those that are his. So when we choose to do the things of God and to change our lives and to lay aside weights and sins, whatever you want to call it, iniquities, and just transform our mind and keep our mind on Christ and constantly ask for direction. The Holy Ghost will lead God and direct us to all truths. And we're in his hands. It becomes a purpose life, a life of Christ. Things that are done from above that he wants to do through us because that's the way he created it. That's, that's his plan. He has a purpose for our lives if we let him. So I don't know where you're at in your journey. Good, bad, hopefully great. It's time to choose the things of God and to look to Him. So anyhow, I just kind of wanted to, you know, that was it was an awesome movie and it's kind of just kind of like a thought for the day. Um, just you know, vessels meet for the Master's use. Something He can work with. We all have it in us. It's there, but He created us in His image. He had a purpose when He created us. We can walk in the destiny of what Jesus wants for our lives, what God wants for us, with Jesus in us, if we let him. And, you know, sometimes it requires us dying out, of course, absolutely, to our will, to our ways, to our thoughts. You know, our mind can be the battlefield, you know. That's why I said, you know, think on these, that's why it says think on these things that are pure, lovely, holy, acceptable. You know, kind of, you know, if you're having an issue with somebody, you know, that worldly saying, put the shield on your other foot, put yourself in their position, you know, is it really them or could it be you, you know, kind of just bounce, bounce it off of God, you know, you're not sure, one day I was having an issue with something and I finally kind of thought I was praying but someone was complaining really and just not knowing what to do, finally I just threw my hands up, Jesus what would you do, because I was stuck, I didn't know what to do, lost needed some guidance and you know what he gave me an answer took me to the word gave me a scripture James 3 17 I had to look it up I didn't know what it was it could have been for all I knew relevant or, or irrelevant you know I just trusted God and sure enough it was relevant it was exactly what I needed fit fit to a T to the purpose so you know it's not he didn't make it that compl complicated and that complex. It's just our relationship with him. He just 
we may have to peel stuff off. We may have to add stuff. You know, we may have to, you know, step back. And when I was a kid, my dad used to have all these holes in the wall because he wasn't a very good mechanic and he'd get frustrated and throw tools. But one thing that he did do that was that was right, and nothing to do with Jesus, but one thing that he did do that was right is he'd, he'd step back after he got really frustrated sometimes and cool off and think about it. So sometimes maybe the situation isn't as it appears because the enemy can get in there and mix stuff up and our relationships with spouses or people at the church can get all kind of twisted up. So maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just a matter of stepping back. God is really like that. You know, what's, you know, because it may not be. And the word of God says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. And it's spiritual wickedness that we're fighting against not people. And sometimes people manifest things out of their lives because of hurt, because of brokenness, because of pain that they've been through. And the enemy's gotten a stronghold in their life. And what he wants you to do is get in agreement with that stronghold in their life to make it even stronger. But what God wants you to do is... Look at them through the eyes of love. Look at them as God made them to be. Like, actually, almost like the opposite of what you see. Like, if you see someone that is portraying um, a spirit of anger, and you, you say, you are such an angry person then you are getting in agreement with that with that spirit that has a stronghold in their life. But if you will say to that person, gosh, you know, God, you've got such a kind heart. You've got such a loving heart. You know, you can call them what their behavior is, or you can declare to people who God says they are. And, you know, for so many years in my life, um, I didn't know that it was the enemy that I was agreeing with, that I was partnering with. When it came to anger in my own life, um, I grew up in a home with a lot of anger, a lot of rage, a lot of fear, a lot of things that, painful things. And I didn't understand that that was spiritual issues. I thought, oh, you know, my mom just hated me. But it wasn't her. It was a brokenness in her and a fear in her. And it came out at me. And the reason that Jesus could look on and see those people that were hurting him and bruising him and beating him, it wasn't the people. He saw behind the people, the spirits that were controlling those people. He saw the bondage and the pain that those people were in that were crucifying him. And he could say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because he saw that it wasn't the people. It was its spirit. And, you know, we can say, well, they don't have to be that way. They have a choice. They do have a choice whether to know God or not. But then they need to know his love. And if they've never really experienced his love deep in their hearts, if they don't love themselves and if they don't understand the unconditional love of God, they manifest things that don't look right. And we can agree with the things that the enemy's doing in their life, or we can go to God and, and pray for the people that we see because hurting people hurt people and usually the people that are the most hurtful are the people that are hurting the most and every one of us is, is made to be loved by God God wants to love everyone and he wants us to be able to receive his love but most of the time the blindness that people have is that they're worth loving Deep down underneath, they don't feel like they're worth loving. They can't even believe, really, that a God that is good would love them. Most of the time, those people that are hurting are people that don't really feel worthy of love. And 
until they can see how good God is and how loving God is, they have a hard time accepting love for themselves. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, like in that movie, a lot of people didn't understand what was going on with that man and the pain he was in and how mean he was. But they may not have seen the life he had growing up. They may not have seen the way he was raised. And all it took was the love of Jesus to change his hard heart, to turn him from an angry man into a man that had humility and that had a heart to love people. When he received God's love, he learned how to love. And, you know, the gospel is so simple, but religion makes it hard. You know, I always like to say um, it like this when I'm telling someone. They, tell, they say, well, there's all kinds of religions. There's all kinds of ways to get to God. There's... You know, there's all kinds of beliefs, there's all kinds of, you know, ways. But really, the way that God reached out for us was that we don't have to earn it. Most religion says we do this, this, and this, and then God will love us. If we can just do, Buddhism says, if you're good enough, then you'll be reincarnated as something better in the next life. But it's all about what you can do. To get to God. It's all about your performance. Your ability to touch God. But see God said. I'm coming to touch you. I'm coming to demonstrate to you. That I love you this much. That I want to show my love. By giving my only son. If anybody has kids. They know the love they have for their children. And for me. I would die first. Before I would give my only child, I would say, no, take me. But God gave his only begotten son on the cross to show us how much he loved us. To show people that they were worth loving. To show people that they didn't have to earn his love. That he loved them unconditionally. And a lot of people, because of the way we're raised, were taught that God expects this, this, and this, and then he'll love me. If I do this, this, and this, then God will care about me. But it's not about what you do. It's God's love that will change what you do. Not what you do will change God's way of loving you. I used to think I had to prove to God that I loved him. But I know now I just have to let him love me. And when I let him love me, I can love him back rightly. And I can love other people rightly. You know, you have to be a good receiver to be a good giver. Because if you can't receive from God His love, then you can't give that love out unconditionally. No strings attached. And I guess... Um, for me, it took a long time to get out of religion and into the true relationship with God, with Jesus, and to know God as my friend and as my father. And, you know, it now my time with God is not asking him to do this, this. It's just being with him and sitting with him and spending time with him. And fellowshipping with him. And I don't have to perform. I don't have to be good enough. His goodness and his love changes me. You know, that's kind of where a lot of our messages is go are going. Who's your source? You know, when you go to God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, you get a you get a truthful, awesome answer. I mean, I'm not going to try to politicize this, but just turn on the news. Everybody's got an unnamed source, this, that. It's just, it's a mess. You know, I don't really want to hear all that stuff, you know. I turn it off pretty much. But, you know, but when you go to Jesus, or to God, or to or the Holy Ghost, because it said the Holy Ghost will lead, guide, and direct you to all truths, you're going to get the right answer. 
And that's what this man needed to do in this movie, and that's what we all need to do, our relation, personal relationship with Jesus. That's what our whole theme of this the messages are going to direct you to. Is to know God and to know His for yourself. love for yourself. Yes, for yourself, because He loved you individually, and He gave His Son for you, because He loves you, and you don't have to be good enough to come to God. He came to you, and He took all your sin, so that you could come freely to Him. And have a relationship with him. He wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. He wants there to be no walls between you. And if you fail God. The worst thing you can do is run away from him. If you fall down. You run to God. And you say God I fell down. Help me. He's like a father. If you have a little child that's learning to walk and they fall down, a mother goes over, picks up that child, holds them and helps them. God is that way. He's a loving father. He wants you to know that if you failed, if you've fallen so far, if you were, if you have gone so far from him, he has never gone from you. When he promised you he would never leave you or forsake you, he meant it. He is there with you. I don't care if you're sitting drunk somewhere today. I don't care if you're in the worst sin possible. His love is right there with you. And he is right there with you waiting patiently for you to say, Father God, I want to come home. He wants you to come back to him. He wants you to know that you're loved. And, and, it is a choice. It's a choice to whether to believe that God loves you or not. That's the biggest choice right there. Do I believe that God loves me today? Do I believe that his son died in my place so that he could show me how much he loves me? See, if we believe that, then we will be saved. Because he said, he that believes will be saved. He said, he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He wants you to know that you're important, and that you're loved, and that he wants to reach you where you're at, wherever that is. If you're on drugs, if you, if you feel like you have failed God so much, he is right there saying, just come back, just come back. Just come back. I love you. You're my child. I don't care how dirty you got in the pig pen. I don't care how far gone you are. If you will let me love you, those things will fall off. If you will let me put my robe on you of righteousness, if you will stop trying and start trusting. It's not about how hard you try. It's about how much you trust. If you try harder, it won't help you any. But if you learn to surrender and say, I give up, God. I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't have an answer. God, I need your help. I want to trust you. God, I want to know you. All you have to do is say, I surrender, God. Here I am, Lord. I give you all of me, the good and the bad. He doesn't want just part of you. He wants all of you. And his love, if you will let him love you, you will see the change in your life will come. It'll change your heart. And then your behavior will change. Because, you know, religion will change your behavior all day long. But what's in your heart won't line up with what you're doing. And you'll never feel the way you're acting. You may be acting kind, but you're not feeling <coughs> kind. You may be acting loving, but you're not feeling loved. But when you really let the love of Jesus come inside of your heart, come into every part of your heart, come into the places where you are afraid for anybody to come, let the love that he has for you come into those places. And when he does, the darkness will leave and the things in your life that you were like, I can't seem to get it right. I don't know why. I, I, I try not to get angry, but I do. I try not to get afraid, but I do. I try not to be depressed, but I am. 
If you'll just let him come in and love you in those places, if you'll just let him love you where you're at, he'll begin to heal you from the inside. And the outside will line up later. We try to get our outside all right and pretty first before we let him do what he needs to do on the inside. And then we look in the mirror and we fool ourselves because we look like we're okay. And we act okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm great. Oh, hallelujah. I used to do that. I used to say that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I felt like crap on the inside. I felt so miserable and so not loved and so not lovable. But you know what? When I let him come into the places in my heart that were hurting and broken, when I let him come in, it, it, was, it was painful. There were times when it was really painful because if you heard my testimony, you would understand that it was much easier to cover it up than it was to dig down deep and let him go in there and heal it. It was painful at first. It was kind of like somebody would gangrene. They have to scrub the wound for it to heal. And for to get all of the stuff out. And then it will start healing from the inside out. Well that's how Jesus wants to do. He wants to get on the inside. And he wants to heal your heart. Your brokenness. Where you've been abused and hurt. And he wants to heal that. And then let the outside begin to change. It will it'll be real then. Um, you know. Being real with God and being real with people brings healing. Letting God see the real you will bring healing to your heart. Um, so I, that's all I'm going to say today. Just be real with God and let him be real with you. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I kind of want to end it with just one little footnote. I don't know if it's a footnote, but, you know, Jesus doesn't really care about sin, but yet he does. He doesn't care because he, because that's why he came, to forgive you and to carry it and to get you the relationship with, with God. It's not him. He did. He, where he, where he cares is because it separates you from the love of God. And it hurts. Because it hurts you. He does not like sin because it hurts you. It hurts your heart. He is not, he hates sin because it harms his children. He wants you whole. He wants your heart whole. He wants your mind whole. He wants your soul whole. He wants you whole. And, and sin is a byproduct of brokenness. Sin is a byproduct of being separated from the love of God. But the more you walk in his love and receive his love, the less sin holds on to your life. He's taken sin on the cross and he got rid of it. His love took it all on the cross. But now, if you, when you know that and you say, I want to receive that forgiveness, I want to know your love, that's a journey. Then you begin to see how much he loves you. You begin to allow him to love you. And he will love you back to wholeness. I'm going to read you a poem, and then this is going to be the end. This is going to be the end. You know, I want to say this one last thing. My mom was looking that up. She's looking up some a poem of hers. Uh, you don't need it. Okay. So, um, there's another video I got out from April 27th about God's healing power, healing grace. That's part one. Um, I'm going to put it out soon. But as of right now, what looked like doom and gloom and horrible doctor report my, my, my cornea is a hundred percent healed the, the rest of it is starting to come along too but it's a hundred percent where they think it was death and destruction new life 
I'm going to tell the testimony soon, um, but that's just kind of a little bit of an update on it. But watch my other one on, from April 27th and then just tune in. Thanks for watching. Hope you share these videos with, with others. Um, just likes, dislikes, put some comments on there. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we'll reply back. You can email us at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Just thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. What is wrong?